Hey, and welcome to another interesting video, which is the second part of the introductory to operations research. So we try to demystify it into different parts so that you can understand better. So at the end of this lesson, learners should be able to divine modeling, which is a very essential concept in research, in operations research. Learners should be able to state types of modeling, types of model of modeling. In a couple of words, should be able to give the vine or give the meaning to each type of modeling. And lastly, we should be able to state the limitation of operations research. So, I'm Abdullah Okwemi Falade. I'm the operation research facilitator in this video. If you're watching this video for the first time, do not forget to subscribe so that you can have the opportunity to learn more and you can drop out the comment section if you have any topic of interest relating to mathematics, quantitative method, quantitative technique and the likes, operation research. So we can move forward. Let's talk about modeling. What's modeling? Operation research model is an idealized or simplified representation of real life system. So in other words, you can say that a model is an abstract representation of a real life problem. Abstract representation. So it's just like an idealized or a simplified representation. And by the time we move forward, we get to understand this. What, we, what do we mean by idealized representation? So, what are the principles and steps in modeling? What are the principles and steps involved in modeling? We have already defined what modeling is. Just like, like in a simple way, is an idealized or simplified representation of real life system. So, talking about the principle and steps in modeling, it includes the first thing is you must be able to recognize that problems exist. So you must be able, so if you can't recognize the existence of a problem, it might be difficult for you to form a model. So, you must know that problem exists. Now, define the problem. What is the problem all about? Is the problem a decision analysis? Is it an optimization problem that requires minimization of cost, time, and resources? Is it a maximization problem that requires maximization of benefits? So you must be able to define a problem. Once you know that the problem exists, now you need to define the problem. And it has to be well defined. So the second thing is you can now, when you know that this problem exists and you are able to divide, so it will guide you to be able to form, because you have from the, once you're able to divide it, it will pave way for you to know the objective. What you need to do. So you can now construct the model. In constructing the model, you need some Incentives. You need some intense incentives. So the first thing is decision variables and parameter. Decision variable and what? Parameters. What, what do you mean by decision variables? As the name implies, those are the variables that determine your solution. So they are unknown to be determined from the solution of a model. They are unknown. So when you solve the problem, at the end of the day, these are the variables that will help you to make interpretation for the implementation of the solution and what in by parameters they are the control variables of the system which can be deterministic or probabilistic so they are the control variables so parameters are control variables decision variables they are unknowns to be determined from the solution of the model so in constructing your model also, you also need to know the constraints. What are the physical limitations of the system? What are the restrictions? So when you are constructing the model, decision variables, parameters, your constraints, they are very, very important. 
and lastly your objective function so it is an indication is an indicator for the achievement of the optimum solution so if you don't know your objective function whether maximization or minimization you might not be able to do the right thing in fact to be able to figure out the implementation of your solution will be very difficult so it is an indication for the achievement of the optimum solution now after you have constructed the model after you have constructed the model you cannot validate the problem don't forget the model is an idealized representation of the real life system. It's not exact real system, but like an abstract representation, an idealized or simplified representation. So after you have constructed the model, you need to validate the problem. You need to validate the problem. So what we mean by validation of the problem is the, 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 the model is is valid if the spice is in exactness it is suitable to predict the, the the performance of the system so if the model like we know is not a, the exact life system but the model is valid when it can predict the performance of the system and it has to be reliable has to be reliable so so the validation of so you have to check the model very well does it is, is it valid can can it predict the performance the behavior of the real life system which we constructed it from so this is very important and lastly you can now implement your final results so implementation of the final result it is when you are able to validate the problem, you can now implement your final result. So that sounds interesting. It sounds interesting? Yeah. Now, what are the types of model? Types of model, the first one is mathematical model. If, I know before now you have all about uh, mathematical modeling, mathematical model. So what are mathematical models? They are symbolic models that use equations and symbols to express a, a simplified version of complex problems. So we use equations. We don't use words. We use equations. So most of the models in operation research and decision analysis are mathematical models, which are approximate representation of reality, and they are used for optimization purpose to get the best optimum solution. So to get the best optimum solution. So most of the modeling we shall be talking about in operation research, they are mathematical models, like the linear programming, the transportation, the assignment, and the likes. <coughs> so moving on to the next model, we have the descriptive model. So this is a non-mathematical modeling. So it is non-mathematical. So it explains the various operations in non-mathematical language. So it defines the, the, the functional relationship and interactions between various operations. So it's like descriptive, just like we have a descriptive statistics. So we have descriptive model. It describes, not in a, in a non-mathematical language, it describes. Okay, to explain it, describe. So we have the predictive from the word predict. It explains or predict the behavior of the system. That's all. To predict. And we have the prescriptive model, just like the, the doctors, the medical practitioners, how the prescribed drug. You will observe that as a result of a, a kind of repetitive complaint from patients, they can easily prescribe drug for any patient. Like, okay, if you said you have a malaria, Because you are not the first people to experience malaria, to have malaria. So the doctor will be able to prescribe for you based on the past experience, based on the repetitive complaint from the patient. 
what has for over the years what has been I mean the kind of drug that is effective for the patient to get over malaria so a model that develops a decision rule or criteria for optimal solution is a prescriptive model and is applicable to repetitive problems so we can create a prescriptive model for health practitioners to solve a particular problem and the solution process the solution process of which can be programmed without a managerial involvement so so if you can create a, a, a prescriptive model to solve a particular problem in the health sector so it will not involve any major involvement at some point in fact if it will it's going to maybe after some time maybe you need to make some amendments in the models so it will limit the managerial involvement and even human interaction so we are still on the types of modeling we also have the physical model so the physical model represents if you have a property that uh, resembles the system and they, rep they represent but the divine size so there are properties that resemble the system. It's, it looks alike like the system, but not in size. Just like we have a scale drawing, the measurement on paper and on land. So, so when you draw it on paper, it will have a similar structure, but it's not of the same size. So we have two major categories of physical model. We have the iconic and the analog. So I, iconic look exactly like the real object, but could be scaled downward or upward. So depending on what you have interest in. And the analog, from the word analogy. So it may or may not look exactly like the real object. Okay? So it's just an analog. Hmm. Just an analog. So they explain specific few characteristics of the idea and ignore other things other details in the object so that's what uh, so we under physical model we understand that it, it resembles the system they represent but differ in size and a physical model can either be iconic or analog it is iconic if it looks exactly like the real object but could not be scaled but could be scaled down or up could be scaled down or up and it is analog if, which may look exactly like the real object, but to explain the specific few characteristics of the idea and ignores things that are superfluous. We have the deterministic model. From the word determine, is a model that all the variables are completely divine and the outcome are certain. Two things. Everything in that, every variable, every input and output variable will be completely divine and the outcomes are certain we also have the opposite which is probabilistic model the input and the output they form a probability distributions it could be a Poisson binomial distribution Poisson distribution exponential distribution and the likes so they represent the likelihood of occurrence of an event so these are the probabilistic model We also have the static model, as the name implies, something static, something stagnant. So they are one-time decision model, cause and effect occur simultaneously. It's one time, everything occurs at the same time, simultaneously, it's one time. So that's why it is called a one-time decision model. So the cause and effect occur almost simultaneously. And we have the opposite, which is the dynamic. If something is dynamic, it changes with time. So models in which time often plays an important role is known as dynamic model. So the models are used for optimization of multi-state decision problems, which require a series of decisions with the outcome of each dependent. So when the outcome of the first stage will have impact on the outcome of the second stage, and the outcome of the second will have impact. So in, that's a multi-stage decision process. In that case, it is a dynamical system. So the model is used for optimization 
of multi-stage. So that kind of problem is a multi-stage decision problem. And it requires a kind of dynamic model that will help us in optimization of this problem. So that's what dynamic model is all about. Take note, time take a significant role, an important role in a dynamic model. And it is a model that is used for optimization in a multi-stage decision problem. So th those two points are very important, okay? So what are the limitations of operations research? We've been talking about operation research since in the first video where we talk about the introduction, the, the origin, the development. But what are the limitations? Does it mean operation research solve all problems? No. The first limitation is operation research is model based. So don't forget, is a model based scientific approach. So, and looking at what modern has been so far, being an idealized representation of reality, it can never be regarded as absolute in any case. So, modern can never be absolute. It's not the same, it's not exactly the same, but it's an idealized representation of the reality. And it really helps a lot. It helps and it has been useful over the years. The second limitation, which we shall talk about in this video, which are very crucial, is the validity of a model. Before you can validate a model, it is the best ascertained by conducting an experiment. Using past data. So, if you want to validate a model for a particular situation, you can only ascertain that validity by conducting an experiment using past data. So these are the two major limitations. We have some other limitations, but these are the two major limitations of operation research. I hope you've learned one or two things in this video. We have some practice questions for you. That's an idealized representation of reality. Most modern operation research and this analysis are dash. Dash are symbolic models. The dash model explains and predicts the behavior. Dash model develop decision rule. The model that is applicable to a problem is a dash. Dash model looks exactly like the real object. A model where variables are completely defined and the outcome are something. So you find the result to those objective, I mean to those uh, practice questions. We also have some dash and dash are the categories of physical model. We, just about, we talk about that. Dash is a model in which cause and effect occur simultaneously. Dash is called one time model. Time play important role in dash model. Size or scaling takes place in dash model. The validity of model for a particular situation can be ascertained only by what? Dash and dash are the components of mathematical models. So we have all the questions there. We have all the questions. We have all the questions. Okay? So these are the information we have for the second part of the introduction to operation research thanks for watching press like and share see you in the next video bye for now